you can, you have to focus 100% on this thing, like 100%. You cannot be distracted. I'm a very distracted. I mean, there's probably I'm on that spectrum of ADHD. Sure. But when it when the when it's at that point of pressure, yeah. it's like okay, there is. 100% focused and there's very yeah. few times except for in those times where I am that focused. Welcome to my new uh, video podcasty project thing. Uh, this is basically this is an excuse for me to sit down for a conversation with people that I find interesting. And joining me today is Peter Lowen. Peter is uh, a cyclist. He is uh, the owner of a bike shop called Country Cycle in Winkler, Manitoba. Um, he's a dad, uh, a husband, and he also happens to be my brother-in-law. Welcome, Pete. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what do you, like, for people, I mean, it's pretty, like, if someone doesn't know who you are, hmm. what, who do you say you are? What do you, what do you tell them that you do? Right, people would typically see me as the bike guy. I don't know that I like that necessarily. Um, but if, what do I do? Yeah, I guess I say I'm a bike shop owner, which automatically kind of yeah. pigeonholes me a little bit. Yeah. Can we fly back? <clears throat> where were you? Where were you born? Where'd you grow up? So I was born in uh, northern Mexico, a little Mennonite colony. Okay and moved to Canada around six, age six. Started in Gretna, then Blum Cooley. Yeah. Now I'm in Morden with my family. Okay. And when did you, like, you're like, okay, I maybe conflicted a little bit about the bike shop or the bike being the bike guy, but when did you, when did you fall in love with cycling? Probably when I was just after high school, I think 19 years old, I met a group through a trip with my brother to New York City, I met a group there, okay. a group of Mennonites, and they were planning, and I got along really well with uh, this, uh, one of these guys in, in this group from Goshen, yeah. Indiana, and yeah. so he said, hey, we're doing a church bike trip uh, okay. from Cumberland, Maryland, Cumberland, Maryland to uh, Washington, D.C. He says, do you want to come? I was like, yeah, I guess I want to come. And so I got a bike, Decent one, a very mid-range one, yeah. but it meant nicest I had ever got. And then uh, that kind of, yeah, that gave me a taste for what it's like, just uh, that feeling of being, riding a bike every day and just experiencing, um, yeah, experiencing day-to-day uh, the joys of it, so to speak, and then I moved. After that, I moved to the city and had a worked in a job where there was somebody who really loved biking. Yeah, he pieced together old bikes to make new bikes and high end part with high end parts. And so I bought one of his bikes and then then got into trail riding because we had a local group in in Morden or yeah. outside of Morden. And so that that's I would say. Is, so when you say like like got like the feeling of of what it was like to to bike every day what was that feeling like i mean was that that was something that you really liked it wasn't just like it was a fun it was, adventure for it was a fun adventure but it was also that yeah that sense of just being i guess you might say a sense of freedom where you're just out uh you're out in nature, I guess you might want to say, or you're just out, you're out and you're seeing kind of the world pass you by very slowly. You're experiencing um, different things, like uh, you're experiencing different events and different, uh, you know, just being able to ride for an hour or two and then, then choose to sit down at, let's say, uh, at an outdoor patio or something yeah. and just that just that I think what I really enjoyed was that well I mean the lifestyle it was almost a holiday but it was it was the it was just like moving through moving uh, through the day on yeah. a bike yeah. get engage, being physically engaged yeah. and mentally engaged and yeah. then you know there was times where you had to exert yourself quite a bit so then you always get that bit of an endorphin rush that comes with yeah. physical exertion so was that like 
like it was so what what really kind of got you into it was like going on a trip going on like a journey cycling not just like a bike ride around like right yeah yeah i got to experience a really i got to experience a different part of the world yeah um on a bike which is yeah maybe that yeah like that would definitely yeah i had a little bit of that feeling this summer we did a bike ride from from winnipeg to landmark like a Mm -hmm. 46 kilometer bike ride and it was I mean, again, for me, being here, filling in the blanks of like you drive everywhere, Mm -hmm. you kind of know how to drive there, Mm -hmm. but you take a different bike route and you kind of, you're going through neighborhoods, you're going through communities, you're getting access to the world in a different way. Mm -hmm. And then being able to stop in a place like, we stopped in Ile de Chaine, being able to stop in a small town Mm -hmm. and look for some ice cream, yeah, for a place to get ice cream, right? right? Whereas you're not on a vehicle, so you already you're pay, you're, it's easy to go at a slower pace, on a on a bicycle, right? Mm-hmm, right. If you're like looking around, you kind of pr- looking through a town or whatever, and then also, you kind of, you don't have to look for like parking or whatever. Like it just sort of, it 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 gives you access in a different way, and then also yeah, being able to, I don't know, see, hear, smell feel yeah yeah you're quite you're you're way more engaged with your environment yeah on a bike and then doing that over the course of like how long was the trip it was a week week long so you camping then we stayed in churches every night what yeah it's like a spiritual so are you do you are you're like the mennonite cyclist because that was like another mennonite group Uh, yeah i guess (laughs) that's right (laughs) do you think of yourself as a mennonite cyclist (laughs) i have not (laughs) But that might uh, there might be something to that. <laughs> um, okay, so so that fast forward. I mean, you you kind of fell in love with the biking. At what point did you uh, decide you wanted to own a bike shop? When did you commit yourself to the lifestyle? Yeah, right. Well, in my early twenties, I was I was I I tried university after high school and yeah. then uh, done a few of these trips and it's like okay i was trying to figure out okay how do i fit in where what's going to be my path yeah in life here and nothing kind of nothing came to me but i kept trying more and more things and then but every time i would do a trip i would always stop and it was and again then i went to uh germany and i biked across germany and that was another like really cool way to experience a different culture yeah a different landscape and uh so we would always make sure to stop in bike shops and i just something connected with me in those places you could sense there was there was community there Mm -hmm. and that's what i think we all look for and that's kind of when you're early in my early 20s is like okay who's my what's my community i know i'm in i my you know morden winkler plum coolie that is a community but i didn't really belong didn't fit didn't feel that uh the church community was my wasn't wasn't what i was it wasn't not that it was what i was looking for but it was not i it was i was just not finding it yeah and so this was a community. I mean, community is just a gathering of people yeah. thinking in similar terms. And okay. Yeah. So that really. So this was with another group. This bike trip. In this was again Germany? with some friends, family friends in Germany. Okay. More Mennonites. More not Mennonites this time. No. What? No. Yeah. Exactly. So. Who I, are these people? So these were people that we still keep in touch with. Uh, quite oh, was this the Blitz? This is the Blitzes, yeah. Oh, yeah, how to explain that? <laughs> Gunta, yeah, this is, uh, right, this is one of my sister, Sarah, who did a, a exchange, high, yeah. high school student exchange with this family, and yeah, the family's just hit it off, and so they've been here, we've been there multiple times, oh. and the Gunta, the father, who's now 70-some, he is just, he's like an insanely, he's an insane cycling enthusiast. <coughs> mm-hmm. So he does these things too. He just, me. they often bike, it's a family vacation of biking somewhere or hiking mm-hmm. somewhere. And so they planned this trip. And so they invited me to come out and- Wow. It's the three of us. So that was when? That was how old were you? That was in 2003, I believe. Okay. 2003, so. Yeah, then I would have been 23, 20, something like that, somewhere around yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, Early yeah. 20s. You did a couple bike trips? 
you know, and, and, and got more and more kind of into cycling. You liked cycling a lot. And, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, yeah. When did you, and then when did you decide to actually open up a bike shop? Yeah. And so, because yeah, I still didn't really know what I was going to do. Yeah. And then my brother invited me to, and I, during this time now, I tried university yeah. and didn't like it. So I was like, okay, I don't know. And my uncle who owns it. So you're trying a bunch of other things. Trying to do, and I tried different jobs. And you always kind of did bike trips in between. I always did, yeah. And you and loved some it. kind of, and I loved it. Yeah. And but I was like, I, at this time, I was driving long distance truck too, and so I had, I had nothing but time to dream. Yeah. And so. That's and you also like driving long distance trips. I love it. Yeah, 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 because it gives me that time to. I'm a. I am a definite dreamer. Yeah. Uh, but I also like to think of myself as a doer. Yeah. I love that. One of the most important things to me is to be able to daydream and just dream about next steps. Yes. What? What? Where do I want to go? Yeah. What do I want my life to look like? Yeah. And so the truck was perfect for that. And it gave me a chance to listen to a lot of ideas a and yeah, a lot of ideas about, about everything and anything. And so I figured, yeah, I didn't know what else to do. So I was like, oh man, the thing that speaks most to me is starting a bike shop. But okay. I, that was, I knew that would be very difficult because we live in a smaller, smaller center. Yeah. The population isn't that big. Yeah. And it's a whole new idea, this idea of, you know, spending more on a nice bike and creating a community. It was, a, there was, luckily there was some, uh, James Friesen from Tinker Creek Cycle, who I, my first real nice ba- bike I got from him. He's okay. just south of Morden. Okay. And he had already introduced it, but it was, it was like 20 minutes outside, out in the country, middle of nowhere. Tinker Creek. Tinker Creek, okay. yeah. So it was, it was, if you knew, you knew. Yeah. Uh, but if it wasn't necessary, necessarily, you know, the, the exposure wasn't there for everybody. So I, sure. I decided that I wanted to go downtown Winkler and I wanted to start yeah. this idea of a bike shop. And Winkler is, yeah, and Winkler is like a bigger town in Manitoba. There's sort of, there's Winnipeg is the biggest sort of city in Manitoba. And then there's sort of Steinbeck, Winkler, Brandon. These are the other kind of three sort of hubs. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So Winkler is like, there's a lot of, it really feeds a whole farming community yeah. in Southern Manitoba. Exactly. So I, I, I thought that if I did, I, I thought there's enough there to maybe make a go of it. Yeah. So a leap of faith and open the doors and lots of struggles. And yeah. So, so you start a bike shop. Start a bike shop. Exactly. How'd it go? Yeah. (laughs) In in brief. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it was, yeah, it's, geez. Yeah, my problem is I I don't have patience. So I just, when I have an idea, okay, I don't want to wait for everything to fall into place. I just want to go. Yeah. Yeah. So things get hard. Yeah. And, but I just put my head down and, Figure things, figure everything out do as you, you go. Do you te- like? I, I always think of myself as like I tend to to leap before I look. Leap before you look. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. That is a good. And then I'll I kind of figure it out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You throw yourself into like yeah this impossible situation. It's because you can't always you can't always think of like every um, you can't plan everything. Right. You know? I know. Like I often think like. Sure, I could like think about every single circumstance and how I would react to that and stuff and make, you know, or I could think enough and then I could do the thing and then figure out how to solve problems when I'm there. Or also like, am I going to like this or am I not going to like this? Well, I'm going to do it and then I'll figure out when I'm there, mm-hmm. what, whether or not I like or how I can like it, you know? Right. Yeah. As opposed to planning out everything to the last detail and then... Right. Deciding not that's to do some it. T- right. That's true. That sometimes is maybe a safer way to do it to ma- to ensure that you're gonna yeah that things are actually gonna work yeah doing a proper business plan and doing all those channels sure. applying for grants and all this do you stuff. Think you would have started the bike shop if if you would have. Uh, I wouldn't have had the patience. No. Yeah. No, I had access to some money and I yeah. figured out oh, this is I'm gonna make this work. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, 
David Goggins. This is what he yeah, does. He I'm just throws himself into yeah. an impossible situation, yeah. and then he's forced to figure his way mm -hmm. out. And like, what a fan! I think that's I to me. But you have to be able to work within a certain amount of chaos, and most people do don't like that. I think. Yeah. You want to have like a bit, a bit more structure. Yeah. But if for like that pressure, like I really like pressure. Yeah. And that, I think that brings out a part of your creativity that otherwise wouldn't be there. Interesting. Pressure. The pressure, pressure cooker. The pressure cooker. I, I do well under pressure. Yeah. That also can be a problem with procrastination. But yeah. my best, I, I would say some of my best work, to, if, yeah, I'm not, yeah, some of my best work is done like, you know, when there's a deadline. And it's not good because yeah. it causes its own stress. But sure. that stress, it's just like, okay, Pete, like you have, you can, you have to focus 100% on this thing. Like 100%. You cannot be distracted. I'm a very distracted. I mean, there's probably I'm on the spectrum of ADHD. Sure. But when it when the when it's at that point of pressure, yeah. it's like, okay, there is. 100% focus and there's very yeah. few times except for in those times where I am that focused. It's interesting because you could when you just think about like a biking You're biking. You're like, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, this is oh, look at the field over there Oh, look at this, the way the, the light. Oh smell this thing and then suddenly you hit a hill Right or something mm -hmm. and, you and now it's few yeah. everything's gone <laughs> Get up this. Hill. How do I do this thing? Yeah, right exactly so do you think that I would do you think that comes out in Competition as well. Would you think consider yourself to be a competitive person? Yeah, I think that's why I like it probably because during competition You know I get and I'm not I I would say I became as a kid. I was never that competitive yeah. It's come out later in life now, uh -huh. but I would say yeah like during that time you're not thinking about anything yeah, but Going as hard as you can and not letting the guy behind you catch you and trying to catch the guy in front of you, you know, there, yeah. There's these these definite goals. I am also a very competitive person. Right, and you might be more competitive than me. And I don't like that aspect of myself. Okay. Yeah. Why not? I don't like what it brings out in me. Okay. Yeah. If you can't, can right? Yeah. I don't like. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I, I just recently just you know over this last kind of summer I started exercising a lot, mm -hmm. and and I find that I just I love exercising for joy i love running for joy mm -hmm. not for any kind of competition you know like i don't trust myself around other people you know like if i was to be so racist, you are right yeah that's interesting right because you have yours more kind of that what i would view as exactly what i I wasn't, I've never been like that, yeah. like you, so if you would uh, um, apply yourself to something yeah. that you're good at, like you could, that edge that you have, that like where you could maybe choke somebody because they're ticking you off, you're in that mindset sure. in a competition, like that edge, yeah. I don't have that really? in that way. Okay. So, and maybe I do, but I've just never, yeah, I don't know, but I think yeah. it, it, it's, yeah, it can be bad, I guess, because it, it'll bring out a, a, a side of you. I mean, it's f it, it in the, at times it's fun, you know. Like if you're playing, you know, if you're playing, if you're if you're challenging someone who is a, of an equal level to you, mm -hmm. that's fun, because then you know that it's it's um it's almost a roll of the dice who's going to win because mm -hmm. you're both going to push each other. Right. to go further and for like I played squash a lot growing up and I remember sort of when I was you know getting a bit you know bigger mm -hmm. getting a bit stronger not like a child anymore sort of a teenager uh, and being able to like go toe-to-toe -to -toe with my dad or my brother playing squash that was a lot of fun okay yeah um, but then that idea that like I guess I guess it just comes down to um, Sport, there there is a winner and a, mm -hmm. and a loser. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in the kind of competitive, uh, if you're thinking about it competitively, and and I don't like to think that I, I would rather just feel like I like that I just came out and put did my all. But then if you think, well, yeah, but you still didn't like beat this person. Like I'm never gonna be 
mm -hmm. athlete. Right. You know? Right, exactly. I don't know. I mean, you were talking about how, like, this last weekend, like, you just, you, you got on the bike, you went to your highest gear, and you just kept it, like, you went as hard as you could, and you just stayed as hard as you could for an hour. Mm -hmm. That sounds like so much fun. Mm -hmm. But the competition aspect, I guess, just the aspect of, like, Will I win? Because I want to win so bad. The part that makes your like palms sweaty, mm -hmm. you know, right. and the nervousness, yeah. and the butterflies. Mm -hmm. I just hate that so okay. much. Yeah, I, I mean, love the I love pushing myself, mm -hmm. but I don't like that aspect of it. If that makes any sense. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That is a different. I've been close to that world in the Manitoba cycling sure. scene anyway, where you do get that. It's very nerve wracking. But still, I think maybe I've lucked out. But you don't feel that you don't feel that way when you go on a, to a, to a race. You're just like I'm just going to do it and just do what I want. I always get a little bit of nervousness, but I have very little. Ex I'm, you know, I don't have a lot of expectations yeah. of myself yeah. because I am like who expects anything of a 46 year old yeah. cyclist? Not very many people. So if I can, I can show people. So you're there to exceed expectations, but you don't have expectations of yourself. No, I have expectations of not quitting. If Things get hard, do not quit. Yeah. That's what it's about. Cool. It's, but other than that, yeah, no, I, I just want to, and I was going to say, maybe I've lucked out with uh, the cycling community because we're all, we're all there. Once, once the gun goes off, so to speak, we're yeah. there to beat the other guy. Uh -huh. But as soon as you finish that cross, that, uh, as soon as you cross that finish line, like yeah. it's all high fives and, you know, good jobs kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas I do, I can remember with hockey, hockey is something that brings out me, that, that I've seen brings yeah. out that part of me yeah. where I, that I don't like to see where yeah. it's like, okay, something gets turned on and your yeah. brain triggered and then you're not, you're not, a, you're, you are now uh, not a very nice person kind of thing. Yeah. Works. Well, also like I just sort of feel, I mean, again, because I have, I've never, I've never exercised the way that I'm doing it now. I, I, um, I guess uh, I, I sort of feel like everything is a new horizon for me. Mm -hmm. you know? So what, uh, what uh, challenge, uh, how do you push yourself? How do you like, yeah, how do you push yourself if you're not going into competitions? And and I don't. I I mean, I, I love yeah. my favorite thing in the whole wide world is to to ride alone yeah. and to be physically active alone. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it, it definitely helps when you're going when you're. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I've what I've done this last uh, little while is I just set goals for myself. You know. Okay. Yeah, that's. I, I just was like, I've never. You know, I I did. Um, me and Sarah. Did did uh, your your sister Sarah? We did that mini triathlon, mm -hmm. and then I thought this was. I mean, once I trained for it, and once I did it, it was easy, and I thought, well, I should do it. I want to do a, a full triathlon or like a, an Olympic triathlon. So then, I just sort of trained for that, and I love the training. It, I, I love the everyday going out and exercising. That's mm -hmm. what I really like. And then the goal of doing the triathlon. Then, well, let's just do that on that day. And then I did the triathlon, and then I thought, well, I've never run a marathon. Right. What would that be like? Mm -hmm. um, so then I, you know, changed gears again, trained up to do a, a, a marathon. And, yeah, now I'm, I need, I mean, now it's winter. So. Now you need uh, a new goal. I need a new goal. Past this, right. Yeah, but I also, I also don't want, like, I loved... I love do running like a 5K every day. I love doing resistance band exercises. I love doing like a 40-minute bike ride every day. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of what I feel is like the base. I want to be able to do that every day. And then if I have to sort of like train up to do, I don't know, cross-country ski thing or some skating thing or whatever, some sort of winter activity, I'll do it. But I want to be able to go back to that sort of feels like my home where I, f I feel like I can, that's my happy place, mm -hmm. you know? Um, like a good, putting in a good effort every day, as opposed to when you have to train for like a bigger thing, you have to take so many rest days. I, I hate that. I don't like Right. That. Okay. So you found kind of a nice, a nice mix or a balance to just fit into your routine. Your yeah. Routine. I like going. And what feeds that though? Like, or just because it brings you joy. Joy. Yeah. It brings me joy. I mean, I, uh, um, this is also this is also me in in sobriety. I guess I was right. uh, yeah I was you know uh, wasn't like drinking or smoking a lot of pot, but more than I needed to be. 
and and it was sort of uh, I guess it, it I came to a point where like I could see where it was going mm hmm so I decided that I didn't want to be a part of that anymore so I, I decided to stop drinking and stop smoking pot and then that sort of opened up a whole <laughs> can of worms or let a whole the can of worms was open it let the worms out you know and uh, how do you think exercise substituted that well I mean exercise you 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 because you, you weren't exercising when you were well I was but okay. not to this degree you know and I don't know because I was I had already been sober for a while when, when I started training for the mini triathlon but um, I think what happened is I just had a place to put my energy mm. I have so much energy mm -hmm. and it just gave me like in the springtime like waking up at 5 a.m. to go for a, a run just felt amazing mm -hmm. go out and meet the day and you get the right. sunlight and then as it got hotter like to be running if I can 5 a.m. run with like a running in a tank top um, it just felt great so I think I think for sure I mean there's a there's a whole list of things like first off it, it's a place to put your energy and then also yeah you get the endorphin hit Mm -hmm. You know, and then also I th just think like moving your body, like, you know, it sort of frees it, 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 it feels like you're being useful. You're being active. Uh, you feel better. You just start feeling better, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You definitely, when you, the, my favorite feeling in the whole wide world, one of them is anyway, yeah. once you've exerted yourself to that degree and you sit down, my, my drives from race, from races to home are mm -hmm. one of my favorite things because you, you. I feel a real sense of accomplishment. I feel exhausted. I feel like, wow, I put in a big effort. This yeah. is actually like, I did something. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, you know, I, in some sense I was, I was, it, it feels like I was productive. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I think that, I think that I prefer that, and I don't know where this is leading is the other thing. There's the excitement of discovery, mm -hmm. you know? I never thought, or I never thought, I, I never thought about running a marathon or doing a triathlon, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, well, like, what, I've, what else is out there, you know? What, um, what, does, what does that world look like? The world of, of sort of exercise, healthy living, diet. I think at some point I'm gonna have to explore, you know, meditation and yoga, you know? Just it, it feels so much more holistic than sort of self-medicating or self-sedating or, you know, trying to get, I feel like I'm not trying to get by. I feel right, like right. you're engaging yeah. in life. Yeah. So back to, I mean, you, you, you started the bike shop. Um, you've had the bike shop for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, I mean, there's been, there's a whole story. You could, there's a whole saga. Right. With his bike shop. That, can you tell me, can you give me like a Cole's notes from, um, from starting the bike shop? You, you decided you, you made the plan, want mm -hmm. something in Winkler. Yeah. And then you executed the plan. How'd you get to here? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, immediately I, I saw that there was a demand for it. Mm -hmm. uh, even though not a huge, I mean, to a, to a degree, I wouldn't say, you know, you, it was a, huge demand but people people did um react positively to the news that i that there was a bike shop now yeah. and so immediately i did have work so money did come in not enough oh. but money did come in yeah right off the bat and so then i had to hire luckily i mean i to open a bike shop i took the, a long way around but i think i'll but it, i mean it taught me a lot i became so while I was driving truck, dreaming up this stuff, I thought, well, I should become a massage therapist. Sure. That way I can, because if you can be, if you can do well at that, you can make good money and you, I can take that money and open and feed it into the shop. Mm -hmm. So yes, and so I balanced those two, doing bike shop hours and massage hours for the first couple of years. And then I got busy enough where I had to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. And then we needed bigger space. We moved, we've moved by now, we've moved about four times wow just getting bigger oh, bigger, every bigger time. space yeah. yeah exactly and i've 
went from just two staff, me and another uh, staff member in 2016, we went to three and that's when, uh, 2016, that's when the big fire happened, which was a big headache, but it really affirmed. Big fire. The big fire, yeah. So in 2016, we were in a beautiful spot, in a space, but actually we had outgrown it and I had already planned on moving to the spot we are now, are in now. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so it was, uh, it was the biggest headache of my life so far, thankfully. That's, yeah, as far as headaches go, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want any worse. But uh, yeah, so some customers who were just out partying needed more money so they broke into a bunch of places and tried to set all of them on fire there's three four different places they broke into three that they tried to start on fire and mine was the only one that did start on fire and so yeah that was uh that was i think i'll always be happy that like glad that that did happen in my life because really only positive things came out of it yeah so other than the broke, stress some, some people broke into your bike shop right and burned it burned it stole some things stole some money and then burned it and then went home and got caught like two hours later and yeah so that was a whole whole i mean that in itself it seems like it is a, is a story yeah and uh yeah yeah that's it's something that is thankfully in the past uh-huh but so that, yeah, so then after the fire, and the greatest thing that, I mean, there's always silver linings and everything. Yeah. And so that, the greatest thing about that was just the community support that I got out of that. Yeah. I would have never imagined that you would have like a private business that people would want to support it. They want to see it continue so they would financially support it. And of course you had a, you kind of at the end, we <laughs> caught a little extra with that commercial. Oh, get Peter that video. Get Pete off the street. Get Pete off the street. We made and probably one of the best videos ever <laughs> called Get Pete Off the Streets. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was good. And so, yeah, so and then since then, and now the new spot, and then there's been lots of growing pains since then. Like it's, it's, it's small business is a constant struggle. Yeah. It never, it's like, oh my gosh. Because you have to have, you have to have, I think, I don't know if I should say thick, not thick skin, but you have to have a real, very high tolerance for discomfort really yeah so it just like never ends never ends no exactly now now as you get bigger you know you make more money but you also have to spend more money to keep the machine to keep it fed yeah and then you need more staff and oh my gosh that's in itself is is yeah. a whole like yeah you're trying to <laughs> you're trying to build a community but you of course we're all very different and yeah. now trying to set the tone and get everybody on the same page i mean luckily bikes you know every we all know we're here because we love biking and, yeah yeah and that but people are people and so trying to manage different personalities is a real is a yeah, it's a real challenge. I mean, it's a, it's, I'll never regret it because yeah. it shows you, it'll, you'll never, you, you learn so much about people just when you're so intimately involved with them. Yeah. And you know how to deal with people much, much better. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, but at the same time, it's very uncomfortable, but at the same time, it's still, my own thing it's yeah. me doing what i want to do i get to i get to i get to control the creative process yeah i mean you got you're fighting uh often with with uh, the people around you the people that you've hired you okay. because they have their own uh versions of yeah. how they what they would like to see yeah 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 and so the after that that's the big challenge and you have sort of invited everyone in to like it's a community space. It is a community space, and, exactly. And uh, and these employees are community members. They're all, they're part of the the Winkler community, um, but then also part of the cycling community, which I I would guess in Winkler is a is a pretty tight knit mm -hmm. community. Yeah, exactly. And they and and they now they have sort of a access to one of the or if not the hub. Mm -hmm. of that cycling community right. right yeah exactly yeah the great thing is that um 
Yeah, the Country Cycle, uh, like Tinker Creek before me and yeah. Country Cycle now. And yeah. there there was a couple of shops before yeah. that too, but just very on a small scale. But that yeah. actually it, before then, you know, there was no, people didn't know that there was this, you know, broader cycling community and what that, yeah, what that looked like. Yeah. But, yeah. So how long have you had the bike shop now? So since 2000, uh, February of 2009 is when I okay. officially took it over. Okay, so just, so you're looking at like, what, 14? Yeah. 14 years now. Mm -hmm. So you've owned a bike shop for 14 years. You've gone, <laughs> you've gone through <laughs> lots of ups and downs. Right. And sort of in a steady... Progression? Yeah, yeah I guess, move, yeah. Move, yeah, I would say two steps forward, one step back rather than the... Uh, yeah. Where are you now? What, so where what, are now? Yeah. Where is your mind oh at now? What, what excites you now? Yeah. So... Let's get into it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, I would have never thought 14 years later, I would still... Like, yeah, I'm at a very, very, I'm at a very, I'm at a very big junction right now because something, now I'm at the most exciting part. I'm at a, at a part of my cycling, um, you know, career or ownership of a, uh, of a cycling entity, probably as it's, a, this, where I'm now at now is probably as exciting as when I first started a bike shop so i've done the retail thing for a while and yeah. so i think you know we all level up so now i feel like i'm finally leveling up i would have thought um yeah and just to, to back up a little bit yeah. like i thought after five years my goal was okay let's this is going to be good we'll get into a good rhythm and then i thought okay the, then when i got there it's like okay i can see the progress but it's like okay i can't eight years uh, things got to get easier and i'm freaking 14 years later and it's just like it is it is easier in some way, but but uh, still, yeah, it's still not where I want. Like you, almost small business is just hard yeah. because you're always watching your bottom line. Like it's financially is tough. Yeah. So you're now I have this opportunity to, be, to go from a small business to a medium size, and that's going to bring huge headaches with itself. But the one thing that I'm really looking forward to is that I think what. I want to get into is the plan. The hope is that that financial component, that stress isn't there. Yeah. Whatever, where I've hoped to be a long time ago is have that financial uh, component of it, not, you know, be right front and center. And uh -huh. so that my create that the creative process can, I can be relaxed and I can just allow my creative process to be free of all the stresses reminding me like, yeah, you don't go there, you know, yeah. So what's the, what, what, uh, what does financial freedom look like for you? And then what, what is the creative process that you dream of? So the, yeah, the, just a bigger, mm, the, the yeah, financial freedom. I think it's just, you know, not having to pinch pennies, pennies. Yeah. Sorry. Every time you're spending and you're looking, okay, well, let's expand this. Let's expand that. Mm -hmm. You're always so limited. I mean, yeah. I am, I will, that's, that's just a reality of it. But when, small, yeah. when you're dealing with small business numbers, you're really yeah. restricted. Yeah. It's still worth it because yeah. it's your own, it's your own thing. And it's your own creative process. And it's just give and take your, and you're in control of your own destiny not sure. really but yeah like and so, so financial freedom is just being able to so i have an idea like i said yeah. earlier I, I i'm a bit of a dreamer so i've got yeah. these i know what i want to accomplish in my life uh -huh. i want to affect change in a positive way okay and so i want to be able to do that without having this financial restraint um or this yeah this Okay. Do you, do you, do you, what, what, what change do you want to affect? Where did that, like I had, uh, we, we talked about falling in love with, with cycling and being part of the community and stuff. What's the, where, where, where did that component come from? Have you always wanted to affect change in a it, positive way? And yeah, just, or I guess creating community, right? You're creating community, you're yeah. creating a space for people to feel like they belong and that they, 
Yeah, essentially that's what it what so, it has So so there's that. So you you had that you've had that at times in your life and have loved that so much and you want to be able to pass that kind of ember on to other people so that they can kind of have their own flames. Right. Yeah, exactly. And and feeling uh, a sense of space and belonging. Right. And I mean my question is not <laughs> um why do you need financial freedom in order to do that? In order to do that? Uh, because it, I, I guess, I mean, you need, for, I mean, money kind of, you need money for everything. To be able to yeah. start ideas, to be able to, I mean, retail, you're buying and you're selling. So you want to do that in a business sense. You want, you want to be able to create a community for people in a, in a business sense. In a business sense, uh, you know, I want to be able to do that while still while making a living. I want to be able to make a living. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to. Financial, there, yes. Financial freedom, I see. I, yeah. I, I get what you're, where yeah. you're going here, yeah. yeah. Financial freedom is essentially, like I do, I want to be able to be my full genuine self. Yeah. And make a living at that thing, right? Sure, sure. sure. Yeah. <laughs> So what, who, who is your full genuine self? Um, my, <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an ongoing process. No, I mean, okay. So when I think about for myself, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I, again, I've, I'm, I'm also in a, in a process of, of discovery and learning and, and I, um, kind of had a little bit of a realization, I guess about a year ago, um, that, that I could, that a lot of who I am. Uh, uh, can be expressed through video, through sort of YouTube videos. And I just started to find so much life just pouring myself into that. And I'm a stay-at-home dad. So, you know, I, I could fit that into sort of my life. And I, and, I, and I don't necessarily... But the neat thing about it for me was I didn't have to attach that to uh, earning a living. You know, the financial aspect, I find that for me, often, not, and this doesn't, you know, everybody has their own story, but I know that for me, I find that the financial aspect often, um, it, it, well, it has an effect on the genuine, the being a, a true genuine version of myself, because at least through, when I think about myself through artistic expression, then I often change from thinking about, well, who am I? How would I express myself to how would people receive this the best? How do I make the most professional product version of this? And then suddenly I'm trying to take myself and I'm trying to fit it into this. Um, mm, right. You know? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm trying to marry two th I'm trying to marry business and something uh, that expression of my character or yeah. myself yeah. I'm trying to marry the two which is which is well cuz you also you have quite an eclectic character like your online persona like through in your sort of Instagram reels and stuff like you can there there is the the very put together the great logo and country cycle and stuff and then there's also like like what Pete is actually thinking <laughs> right <laughs> Are you saying there's a disconnect? I think that I think that there's a lot. There's, there's a, a lot. lot there's a ton. You know, and yeah. and I think that that I just love seeing you taking an honest stab at it. You know, I love seeing when I'm like, "Ooh, that's that's Pete." You know, that's not like a, that's me coming. Through. Yeah, that's not a, some product. Right. You yeah. Know, that's a yeah, person. and you know that's interesting. And I don't, you know, I just don't care enough to like, um, but my, you know. <laughs> Manitoba loves me, but but like my following is is pretty terrible. I would say in the grand scheme of things, but what it's is like that? what do you mean? Uh, like as far as but here's the thing, you know, you know, in the cycling world, yeah. I feel I like when I look at cycling, the cycling Instagram uh, world, it's yeah. like man, there where's the soul? And so I'm trying to inject some soul, some genuine character, but but it's not. It, people don't seem to people. So it's like so it's like. I'm almost limiting my own viewership because it's either you know Pete, you want to get to know who this guy yeah. is, yeah. or you know. For, but for those guys that just want to see, oh, I, like the Shimano's latest gadgetry or like all the componentry, yeah. like that's yeah. not me because no. that, that product that, reviews. That's product. Oh my gosh, yeah. you know, yeah. you know. That's what I. That's what I. 
I love that stuff because yeah. it goes on a bike and it helps me experience what yeah. a bike can do. Yeah. But like there's zero soul in that. And I need to do it to make money. Like I should do more of it to maybe I'd sure. make more money. But it's just like, oh man, that's there's the, it doesn't it doesn't do yeah uh, yeah I just yeah so, so is that what you mean when you talk about I mean that's how I think about a, being a true genuine self or you're talking about something else when you're thinking about being your true genuine self I just want to be yeah to be myself like I think um, there there's and I haven't just fully discovered it yet but yeah, I think each one of us is kind of has these innate um, characteristics or these abilities um, that a lot of other people, they have them, but in different combinations. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? And so it's like, okay, yeah. like I'm very, I'm, I'm probably number one, compassionate, mm -hmm. maybe even to a, to a fault at times as a business owner yeah. to a fault. Yeah. And so, and very much, I want to give. I want, I'm, I, I probably give to a fault. Uh -huh. And uh, so, how can I do that? Yeah. And still. You know, how can I do that? You know, and, and uh, you know, realize that without giving all of my money away, how can I make enough money so that I can live comfortably, yeah. unimpeded, yeah. Uh, with the stress of uh, financial responsibility, but still, and then take that and share that with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a tricky, but it's a tricky balance, and that's why, yeah, 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 it's. Not, but you are at, I mean, I don't know if you can, you, me, because things are in motion, maybe you can't talk too much about it, but you are at... Loose lips sink ships. <laughs> <laughs> Snitches get stitches. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Uh -oh. <laughs> you have a message? A message? Yeah, or like a mantra, or like, do you have a, what's your message for the world? <laughs> My message for the world. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Oh what are you man. thinking about these days that sort of is going through your head that, that you just sort of feel like this is... If, if this is... If, if you could sum it up, what would it be? I don't know if I have a... Uh, is, I can sum it up. Loose You know, what... what, what you know what? Uh, prob the, the best way to solve uh, problems yeah. is creative thinking, right? Because what, what ends up, what I've been thinking about lately is that, is we have, you know, we're stuck in, we always, we produce conventional, uh, conventional thinking. That's, mm -hmm. you know, we get stuck in these uncomfortable ways of doing things. So I want to not limit myself. So don't limit yourself to conventional ways of thinking. Be yourself. Um, really listen. I would say, you know, if you can, Teach yourself meditation or prayer, like truly silence all the distractions around you. Like that's, there's a lot of answers in that, I think, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's a hard place to get to because we are so distracted. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, yeah, I, you know, don't be afraid to think creatively and, but doing so requires a shit ton of work on your part, on yourself. Yeah. 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 So cre so, you, so, so creative thinking is important. Yeah. And, uh, and silencing some of the voices in your head. Silence all the, yeah, like all the, yeah, so many, like all the voices around you. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, the encouraging voices are great. Yeah. But everything around you is telling you, is probably, it's probably, maybe it's just me who, uh, in my, in my, in the way I grew up and where yeah. my background came or how I, mm -hmm. what, what I've come from. But it's like, yeah, don't listen to all those negative voices you just because people we essentially you know it seems like we let fear fear is the number one thing that dictates what we're going to do yeah and like yeah like so, creativity yeah creativity creative having creative i think we're limited we limit our yeah. our, cre our creativity is limited because we have so many we um conventional ways of thinking yeah let that go i mean work within it yeah. it's a system right paul yeah. It's a system. Like we, we have systems all around us, but I, I swear to you that it restricts what we're able to. I mean, there's dumb ideas for sure. Yeah. But let those dumb ideas, um, yeah, f uh, follow through on themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Make those dumb mistakes. No, I, I agree. I fully agree. Yeah. Yeah. You, you uh, fail hard. Fail hard. Right. Go out there and do it. 
Go out there and do it and see if it works or not. Yeah. Best way to learn, apparently. And it is. But yeah, what's my message to the world? Oh my gosh, I don't know, Paul. No, that's a good message. You got, you got a couple in there. <laughs> yeah, to another, sum it up. Do you want another crack at it? <laughs> no. no, that would be my message. That's what I'm working on with myself. And that's, yeah. I think it's working. It's, it's working for me. I have 100% faith in that I'm going to be able to make uh, my plans moving forward work. Yeah. Pete? Thanks for stopping by for the <laughs> good to, It's been a pleasure. Yeah, good to, good to sit and chat with you. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, genuinely, I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, where this next chapter of your life takes you uh, and, and where it takes uh, your community. And, and I'm excited to see the, the community that grows uh, because of it. I mean, that's what you naturally do is you create community and and uh and you you lift others up so thank you for everything that you do and uh we'll see you at a family gathering <laughs> excellent yeah well it's been a good chat here paul mm -hmm.